This video is intended to show Jive administrators how to report on who is supplying correct answers to questions, as well as how to tell which users are receiving email notifications for what spaces either by the Track and Communications option or the Receive Email Notifications option. This information is collected from different Jive databases, and most of the work is done in Excel since that is a lot more familiar to most people. A quick disclaimer, this video guide was created on a Jive instance running 5.02. First thing you need to do is install Community Manager Reports if you don't already have it. Next, go to CMR Profile Completion and download the CSV file. Remove any information you don't plan on using. I personally just keep user ID, username, first name, last name, company, and email address, which you can see in this example. That is what's going to be used for your VLOOKUP table to tell who is an employee and who is not. Sort this by user ID from smallest to largest. Next, if you have an export of all your places and their IDs, you can classify those further by department, division, or anything else you want to report on. For my example, I had an export of all our spaces and space IDs with the space names and what department they belong to. Sort this by space ID from smallest to largest. After you have some profile and space data to cross-reference in Excel, you need to download and install PostgreSQL per the guide. The only thing I did different is I made three different databases, so I have one for analytics, one for system, and one for EAE. After you've downloaded and installed Postgres per the guide, log into Jive Cloud and download the dump files for both the system database and the EAE database, and then simply follow the instructions in the guide to restore them. Note the restore process can take a while to complete for each database. First, you'll need to open the Postgres admin interface by going to Start, Programs, Postgres SQL 9.1, PG Admin 3. Under Servers, double-click the Postgres SQL 9.1 localhost. Expand Databases, and this will expose the databases you restored using the guide. First, double-click on the System database, then click on the SQL Query magnifying glass to open up a query window. Paste in the query supplied for answers to get a dump of all the questions in the community and who answered them. After pasting the query in, click the green arrow to execute the query. This will show the results in the bottom of the window. Next, go to File, Export, leave the default settings, and pick a file name. We'll call this one Answers. Then click Save, and then OK. That will create the file that we'll import in Excel later. Next, close the current query window that you have open. Then click on the EAE database, followed by the SQL Query magnifying glass again to open a query window for the EAE database. This time we'll use the Graphical Query Builder since I just want a complete dump of one specific table. Expand Schemas, Public, and then click and drag the Jive email watch table to the open space on the right hand side. Then click the green play button to generate and execute a query. Notice the editor will display that query for you. Then we will follow the same process as before to export these results to a CSV file we can use in Excel later. We'll rename this one to email.csv. Then go back to the Graphical Query Builder and click on the current table and press the Delete key on the keyboard. Now find the Jive User Object Tracking table and drag it to the white space and again click on the green arrow to build and execute the query. Again we will export this to a CSV file. Once you have the CSV files, you'll need to clean them up into a readable format. To do this, click anywhere on the data set and hit Ctrl A to select all, then go to Data, Text to Columns. Delimited is selected by default, so click Next. 
then select the semicolon and click finish. This should put everything in proper columns and rows. You can double click the column divider to automatically resize it to the proper width. After your data is formatted properly, select it all, copy and paste it into a new worksheet in the spreadsheet you have your profile and space data in for VLOOKUP. To find threads containing correct answers, sort this data by resolution state from largest to smallest. This data contains three different resolution states. Three means a correct answer was selected, two means the thread is marked as assumed answered, and zero means there is no answer. One important thing to note is any time there is a helpful answer on threads in any of these different resolution states, there will be a separate entry in the data set for each helpful answer supplied. So you'll see thread IDs duplicated for any that fit that scenario. For example, you could see one entry for the thread showing the correct answer set to one, and then the same thread ID again for a helpful answer on that same thread. When I recorded this video, I accidentally forgot to sort by correct answers from largest to smallest as a subsequent filter after resolution state largest to smallest, but I end up fixing it later. Just know helpful answers exist in this data too, anywhere helpful answer equals one, so you can report on that data if you want. In our example, employees have an email address of name at abc123.com. We're going to match based on this string and email addresses to identify employees versus users, but first we need to pull in the email addresses of everyone who supplied a correct answer. Make a new column and label it email. Then type in the equal sign followed by VLOOKUP and hit tab. Select the cell containing the answerer's user ID followed by a comma. Then click on the tab with your profile data and select it all followed by hitting F4. It's important to hit F4 so it inserts the dollar signs in this field of the VLOOKUP function to prevent Excel from changing the range when you copy the formula to the rest of the worksheet. After seeing the dollar signs, hit the comma again and then count the number of columns until you get the email data. In our case, it is 5. So enter 5 followed by another comma and finally type out the word false and then close the parentheses and hit enter. That will return the email addresses for the person that answered the question. Then click and drag this for all the remaining correct answers. If you'll notice, I drag past the correct answers into the assumed answers territory where the resolution state is 2, so some of these showed up as NA. Now that we have email addresses, we can determine who's an employee and who's not with a little Excel magic. Make a new column called user type and paste in the given formula. This formula works by searching for the string at abc123.com, since that is what our employees will have. If Excel finds a match for that, it will return a number value for how many characters in the cell have to be skipped to start that string. We can combine this with the isNumber function in Excel. If an employee email address exists, it will find the matching string and return a number which makes the isNumber function return a true. Then we can use the if function to say, if that case is true, label the cell with employee, otherwise label it with user. Just make sure to change the cell reference to be the right column containing email addresses for your data set. Then click and drag this to the end of the correct answer data set. Now we're going to pull in what space the question was answered in since the dump contains the container ID. I accidentally didn't sort my space VLOOKUP data by space ID from smallest to largest initially, so I'm going to fix that now. Now, make a new column called space and then hit the equal sign. Type VLOOKUP and hit tab. Then select the cell for container ID, followed by a comma. Then click the worksheet containing your space information, select it all, hit F4 again to insert the dollar signs, followed by a comma. Then enter the column number containing your space names, two for our example, followed by another comma, then spell out false and close the parentheses and hit enter. You can click and drag this to the end of the data set.
Now I'm going to resort the results by resolution state and correct answer, both from largest to smallest, just to give correct answers. Then I can scroll down to where the correct answers end with a resolution state of 3 and correct answer equal 1, and then insert a column to separate the data. Now select all the correct answer data and then go to Insert Pivot Table. Select to put the table on a new worksheet and then click and drag user type to the row labels and value fields and instantly we can tell how many answers came from employees versus users. You could also add space data to the pivot table to easily see how many answers were in each space. The resolution date is included in this report, so if you wanted to, you could sort correct answers based on that and give a report of how many questions were answered each month. The process for reporting on the database dumps we got for emails and tracks is very similar. If you did not do so previously, format the data with the text to column button. Again, this will be delimited with a semicolon. One thing worth noting is for my example I was only interested in emails on spaces, so I sorted by object type and then filtered out anything not set with an object type of 14, so only spaces were shown. After you have the data you want, just like before, we'll use a VLOOKUP to pull in the space name, company division, or anything else you have in your VLOOKUP dataset. After selecting the object ID which equates to space ID in this table, select the space VLOOKUP data, remember to hit F4 for the dollar signs, and then enter the column for the data you want to return, then enter false and close out the VLOOKUP function. Then once again just click and drag the formula to the remaining cells, and then you can select all the data and do insert pivot table to view the results. Although I did not show it, you could use another VLOOKUP on the user ID to get the username, email address, or other data to see who subscribed to a space and also figure out if they're an employee or not. You can then use a pivot table again to get a quick count of how many people are subscribed to each space. Our final data set is related to users tracking items, and the process is identical for it too. Just repeat the same steps. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section.